Hey, welcome again. Today we are going to talk about SQL Server wait types, wait stats and queues. If you know these concepts well, performance troubleshooting in SQL Server will definitely become easier for you. What are wait types? Plain speaking, if a request goes to SQL Server and it is converted to a task, which means a thread is assigned to it, so either your workload is running or it is waiting. If it is running, everyone is happy. If it is waiting, SQL Server records what it is waiting for and that's precisely called as wait types. Now in SQL Server there are probably more than 800 different wait types and I certainly do not know all of them but we have come across many common wait types that I'm going to talk about today. SQL Server records these wait types and you can extract this information from SQL Server. There are various ways how you can capture this information. Along with wait types, you also need to understand the concept of queues, what exactly queues are, and of course, the overall wait statistics. So let me explain you. When SQL Server record this wait types, uh, you will be able to extract this information from sysdmos underscore wait stats, which means SQL Server is adding up all the different wait types and their total wait time in this DMV, and you extract this information out of this DMV. This is cumulative aggregated data that you get. Not very helpful unless you do some mathematics on it or you record it on a periodical basis. But first, let's drill down into the concepts and let me try to explain this to you with an illustration. For example, you have your customer, a user, you have your SQL Server set up, and here are all the different wait types. Now look at this, page IO latch, CX packet, page latch, IO completion, write log, and there are many different wait types with LCK, underscore star. These are common wait types that we come across quite often and each one of them have a different meaning. Page IO latch is a wait type that, pro that could denote probably there is some bottleneck at IO level, physical IO. CX packet has to do with parallelism. Page latch has to do with some kind of buffer latch contention. Likewise, write log probably has to do something with uh, a contention in your log file. Now, let's build on the illustration further the user sends a request to SQL Server and the request is now waiting. Let's assume it is waiting and it is waiting on page IO latch. Now what SQL Server will do, SQL Server will assign page IO latch as a wait type for this particular thread. And now let's say another request comes in. Now that is also waiting on page IO latch. Likewise, your business users are firing more and more workloads and more requests are coming in and waits keep happening in SQL Server all the time. This time, it gets assigned to CX packet. Maybe some parallelism is happening. Likewise, there is some buffer latch contention. So there is wait type on page latch. So if you see, as more and more threads keep coming in, they keep on waiting for the resource and they are all queued up for their respective resource and they are waiting in these queues. Now what SQL Server also does here is, as a particular thread is waiting on a particular wait type, SQL Server will record for how long it is waiting for. This is called as wait time and this information is captured by SQL Server and it is continuously incremented which means it keeps adding up. This is what we call as cumulative wait statistics. Now to summarize in totality if you see here are your wait types all of them common ones, uncommon ones, preemptive ones etc. We will talk about these common ones and these are your queues so consider these as queues like each wait type has their own queue where threads are waiting for. And then these are your wait stats, which is the total wait time, signal wait time. This information you can extract from the DMV that I talked about, sysdm underscore os underscore wait stats. Now let us see these wait types in action. Let us see another illustration where I will show you wait types in action. Now consider that this is a, a CPU, a core, and you can see SPID60, one of the sessions, SPID60 is running. There are a couple of other sessions, SPID 73, 59, 56, and 55, they are waiting. They are in the waiter list, waiting for some resource or the other, and depending on what they are waiting for, SQL Server has assigned specific wait types. For example, SPID 73 is waiting on LCKMS, which is, it is trying to acquire a shared lock on a specific resource. SPID 55 is waiting on resource semaphore, which means that it is waiting for specific amount of memory grant. Now, while one thread is running, others are waiting in the waiter list, there are some threads that 
have got access to whatever they wanted and they are in the runnable queue. Now, just a few minutes before I said that either a thread is running or it is waiting. While there is a special status here, which is they are ready to run, but they are just waiting for their turn on the CPU. This is called as the runnable status of the thread. And you can see 51, 64, 87, 52, and 93 are in runnable queue. This queue is like first in, first out, which means the moment the core is free or the moment SPID 60 is done with its job or that gets started waiting for something, you will see SPID 51 moving up the chain and it will start running. Now, this is precisely the next phase of this illustration. Assuming SPID 60, which was running, now suddenly has to wait for IO underscore completion. Some wait type was assigned to it. So it moves from running status to the waiting status, uh, which, which means this particular thread will now get suspended. While the, now the CPU, the core is free and it can, it can take in another thread. So SPID 51 will move up and will start running. And while all this was happening, SPID 56, which was waiting on CX packet, completed its wait type and goes and lines up at the end of the runnable queue, where you can see SPID 56 comes down. Well, this becomes the final status then, where SPID 51 is running, SPID 60 is waiting on IO underscore completion, and SPID 56 moves at the end of the runnable queue. Now, consider that this is a, is a cyclic thing that keeps running, uh, keeps happening for every core, every CPU on your hardware. Now, I would demonstrate some common wait types that I just talked about by way of a few demos. Let's get started. I'll demonstrate a couple of wait types. For example, page IO latch, CX packet, LCK MS, buffer latch, resource semaphore, um, maybe not thread pool as it is not a good wait type to demonstrate. So be before we begin, I will show you the setup. I am using RML utilities which is installed in C RM utils folder and it has an executable called ostress.exe. I heavily use RML utilities more specifically ostress.exe whenever I have to simulate multiple users, multiple threads and I, I use it more for performance benchmarking and baselining. Let's get started with the uh, first one. I have a file here, waitstats.sql. I'll open it and because I also want to show you the wait statistics after I run all the different wait types, I will first go ahead and clear the wait stats. So there is a command dbcc sql perf and you can clear the data that resides in this particular DMV. You can execute this and let's look at the output of wait stats now and you can see um, it's it's nothing really all zeros out there I order by wait time that is the total cumulative time each wait type has uh, gathered so you can see a lot of preemptive stuff there and if you if I execute again you will see some changes happening like a async network IO has come on top but really uh, none of our common wait types that I'm going to demonstrate so we'll keep this window open here and start the first one page IO latch sh and my command here for ostress.sql is ostress um, the exe hyphen e for trusted connection and I'm going to call a workload uh, called workload.sql so hyphen i stands for input file uh, hyphen q is quiet mode hyphen n10 means the number of threads that I want to run and how many times I want to repeat that's hyphen r this is my server which is the current server slash sql 2014 that's the instance name I will copy this and in my RM utils folder I will paste it here and every time what I'm going to do whenever I have to simulate multiple users I will just copy this workload.sql in the uh, in the RM utils folder and execute this so we can for the time being safely close this and open copy this workload.sql in RM utils folder that's the workload I'm going to execute and open page IO latch SH. Now, very straightforward code. I am trying to retrieve data from the DMV, Dem OS waiting tasks, which gives me all the tasks that are waiting on, on any specific wait type and I'm filtering on page IO latch. If I execute this, you can see um, it's an empty result set because there are no tasks that are currently waiting on page IO latch. Let's go ahead and fire our workload.sql with 10 threads. 
if you execute this and I go back into looking into wait stats, uh, waiting tasks DMV and I execute this and you can see that there are some threads now waiting on page IO latch SH. Now this is a wait type which demonstrate that there could be potential IO bottlenecks or simply that there are threads waiting uh, for their uh, for to complete their physical IO which is reading from the disks. So this has executed. Let's control C will stop it. Let's close this and let's move on to the next one. The next one is CX packet. Very simple to demonstrate and I will open CX packet dot SQL. This is the code that is going to run and I will just run a single thread because this is going to run in a loop and this particular piece of code uh, will actually run in parallel. So I will see multiple threads for this particular execution and I am going to open my monitor CX packet dot SQL. Now likewise the way we looked into page IO latch I am going to retrieve all the tasks that are currently waiting on CX packet wait type and if I execute you can see none of them are waiting on CX packet. Now let's go ahead and execute this in the loop and I will immediately go back here and execute this. Let me go first go ahead and stop this back to monitor and you can see that from session ID 57 there were eight threads that were waiting on CX packet wait type. Now I am running this VM on, um, on a machine with eight cores and that's why I see that my workload, my query was parallelized into eight different threads and, and you could see that uh, basically if I, if I join them with threads I will see different uh, thread IDs. Uh, all of them belong to session ID 57 waiting on CX packet. Let's close this and okay I will stop this. Now while we were doing this why not it's a good time to go ahead and see what our wait stats look like because we have caused a few page IO latch and a few CX packet and if I execute this you can see page IO latch SH comes right on top and then you have SOS scheduler yield. We'll talk about this sometime again and then you can see CX packet also coming in our top 10. Of course I'm filtering on um, as I said before a lot of system wait types that will keep occurring all the time so you got to filter on them and focus on um, your user weight types or so-called workload weight types. Let's go ahead and uh, execute the others. Next is LCKMS, fairly simple. I have a query here LCKMS and I can, what I can do, what I will do here is use adventure works. I will begin a transaction, update a table and set last name equals to Bunsel where business entity ID is equal to one. Let's go ahead and execute this and you can understand what I'm trying to do. I have a in-flight transaction and open transaction which means this particular record um, is still locked. The transaction is neither completed nor rolled back and I can open my blocked query. Now the blocked query will, um, what, what it means is simply that this select statement will be blocked because it's going to, uh, it's trying to read data from that table and that particular record uh, already has an exclusive lock on it uh, from the other transaction and this is going to acquire a shared lock and it has to wait. So let's go ahead and execute this and as you can see it is waiting. Let's go back into the other session here and you can simply run the same statement again on DMOS waiting task but this time filtered on LCKMS and if I execute this I can clearly see that session ID here that I was talking about 59 is being shown here session ID 59 and it's waiting on LCK MS. The wait duration also tells you how long it has been waiting for and this all will be cumulatively um, will get added in into wait stats from all the sessions and all the threads. Let's roll back the transaction and close this and of course as, as I roll back and the wait is completed I get the result also because the wait period is over and I'm able to this particular transaction is able to acquire a, acquire a shared lock. Let's close this. Let's move on to the next one. Well good time if you want to run this again. Um, let me comment this because I accidentally don't want to 
run the SQL perf statement and if I execute this again and I can see LCKM is also now there coming in, in top because we waited for quite some time. Let's try other ones. Next we have buffer latch and again I would like to call this workload.sql so I will copy this in rmutils folder and paste it here, replace the file because that's a different script but the command is going to be same which is o stress. So let me clear the screen and that's the command and it's running in the loop. Let's go ahead and open buffer latch and as you can see I am this time great. Let me first close the okay let it run no problem. Now you can see I'm filtering on DMOs waiting tasks and this time I'm filtering on page latch and page latch is different from page IO latch while page IO latch uh, kind of hints at IO bottlenecks physical IO bottleneck page latch demonstrates contention in the memory with with the buffer uh, that's really what page latches it's it's demonstrating buffer latches so that's what is going on uh, I will stop this piece of code with control C and clear the screen and of course when the workload stops and if I execute there are really no contention there's no contention in the memory let's close this and I think we're almost done with the last one being resource semaphore and again I will copy workload.sql and paste it here and command is going to be same but before I run the command I first want to open resource semaphore.sql and show you that there are no workloads that are waiting on resource semaphore wait type and there's another correlated uh, DMV here that I want to talk about DM exec query memory grants which shows you how much memory grant each query has received for its execution and it also tells you whether it has received or not or what how much memory it asked for so these are some information that you will get from this DMV and, and you can see they're all returning empty result set right now because because SQL Server is co-signed there's no data there's no workload running right now and let's go ahead and fire 10 threads with the workload and as they run I'm going to execute both of them and we get some output here and let me quickly explain you so of course there were a lot of these threads 66 68 65 61 these are all threads um, no, I'm sorry these are not threads these are session IDs but uh, invariably they are uh, tasks that are being executed by threads that have been called by RM utilities or stress that created by there and you can see they're all waiting on resource semaphore wait type and what this wait type means is simply that some workloads that were running were granted the memory that they asked for um, or maybe lesser but this is the requested memory that they had asked for and um, they were granted this much so let's say this query asked for like 870 MB or so and was granted that much but then there were some workloads that were not granted the memory at all which means these are the ones that are actually waiting on resource semaphore and you can let's try to correlate some of their session IDs so I can see 66 and 68 here and you can see 68 and 66 here which says null which means they are waiting on resource semaphore and you can correlate this with DMOS waiting tasks well let's go ahead and stop this um, and clear the screen and close this now uh, while uh, now that we have run a lot of different wait types uh, good time to go and check our wait statistics and you can see that CX packet resource semaphore comes way top now because we ran the workload for quite some time then page IO latch page latch are and page latch UP and page latch EX UP stands for update EX stands for exclusive are basically the buffer latches that were caused by uh, the buffer latch uh, wait types and then LCKMS uh, this is also part of the buffer latch contention that I demonstrated and of course this is a this is no way um, a very exhaustive demo of all the different wait types that are there in SQL Server there are like more than 800 different wait types I just try to show the most common ones and uh, in fact in the most common ones also there are many of them I just wanted to give you a very very quick introduction of what 
uh, weight types are and I just wrote a few scripts to cause them and, and see how how uh, you how you can see them using uh, weighting task DMV. Weight stats uh, is also um, a DMV which, uh, that you are seeing here which gives you cumulative data and this cumulative data honestly is not very useful unless you periodically record it in a table like a baseline database and do some mathematics on it by filtering on different date time and and you have to do some aggregations to make this output a little more meaningful that really helps you to investigate and troubleshoot SQL Server performance. Well, my name is Amit Bansal and I loved recording this video for you. I'm available on that URL, sqlmistros.com slash Amit hyphen Bansal if you want to know more about me. Thank you very much for your time. Hope this video was worth your time. Follow me on Twitter, A underscore Bansal. See you in another video very soon. Goodbye.